Hi, this is Forrest Blocker. I'm going to talk to you today about cancer, cancer treatment, cancer research, what we've learned in the last 30 or 40 years, what we expected to learn, and where we're going to go from here. I have a consulting company called FarmStatus, farmstatus.com. I do competitive intelligence, new developments in pipeline drugs, look clinical trials. I'm here with my daughter who is a freshman in high school. She is going to give us kind of an intelligent layperson's point of view. So what is cancer? It's a variety of disorders. Tumors are classified as to their cell type and they can arise from any cell type in the body. We have yet to engineer any control that works on all cancers in all situations. Cancer is difficult to cure because it is integral to the cancer victim at a genetic level. So what we're saying there all together is that cancer is many different disorders. They have certain commonalities. They have to be treated differently. And one of the most difficult parts of treating them is that the cancer cells are part of the person. So overall, for all different kinds of cancer, cancer is caused by abnormal, uncontrolled cell proliferation. So cells start growing and they won't stop. It's a disease or diseases of the cell cycle. So normally cells in our body have a certain lifetime and it depends on the type of cell. So a, a cell, when it uh, is when it first divides and, then, and begins being an autonomous cell, it'll have a certain lifetime depending on the kind of cell and then it is supposed to die because what happens after a while is that there are genetic abnormalities, there are mutations that just spontaneously occur and so cells shouldn't be around for very long because they'll they'll start um, encoding and passing along mistakes. But with cancer cells, something goes wrong with this cell cycle and they don't die. So some of these shared attributes of all different kinds of cells um, have been um, quantified in a seminal paper called The Hallmarks of Cancer. And those are a very good way to think about what cancers, no matter what kind of cancer, what, what, whatever cell it began from, um, they, they have these common attributes. They grow abnormally. They proliferate abnormally. They don't die when they're supposed to. They can live for virtually forever. They start growing blood vessels, small little blood vessels around them to support them so that they can get bigger and bigger. They move around when they're supposed to be locked in one particular type of tissue. They can move in other tissues. They develop genome instability. In most cases, the karyotype of a cancer cell is incorrect. That means that there's the wrong number of chromosomes. That causes other instabilities. And then finally, it can become a disease of the metabolism. So how big is the problem? There are 12.7 million cases of cancer worldwide every year. 7.6 people in the world die of cancer every year. Cancer is the cause of 13% of all deaths, more than 1 in 10. There's a 5% decrease in U.S. cancer deaths per person between 1950 and 2005. So that's not great. That's something, but it's not great. It is the leading cause of death in developed countries and the second leading cause in developing countries. This is only about 5 to 10 percent of the inherited uh, uh, of the cases of cancer where there's an inherited gene. Most cancers are sporadic. They're not inherited. They're something that you acquire during life. So family history can make you more susceptible but everyone is susceptible. There are environmental factors, infection, radiation, and immune, immune deficiency that can be an initiating factor in cancer. So what do I mean by environmental factors? Toxic chemicals, cigarette smoke, PCBs, coal tar, asbestos, Diet is very, very important in cancer. Also, mechanical stress, chronic irritation to skin contributes to the development of squamous cell carcinoma, for example. And infection, it turns out that, remember we were talking about 5 to 10% of 
cancer was initiated by a family predisposition, something that you were born with. So it's much higher, 15 to 25, attributable to some infectious agent. Could be bacteria, heliobacteria, for example, viruses. Human papillomavirus is almost completely responsible for cervical cancer. That's why they've developed the, the new papillomavirus vaccine, and they want to give it to little girls before they become sexually active because that way they will be immune to the common everyday terminology for this is you, you can develop genital warts and later it can cause cervical cancer. Cytomegalovirus causes Carposi's sarcoma. There's Epstein-Barr virus which causes Burkitt's lymphoma, immunoblastic lymphoma, and nasopharyngeal carcinoma. There's hepatitis B, which causes liver cancer, and there are retroviruses that cause T-cell lymphomas. When I say cause, there's usually multiple causes, so this might be an initiating factor. There are also parasites that can cause cancer. You can have genetic mutations, molecular abnormalities, these can include um, point mutations, proto-oncogenes becoming oncogenes, chromosomal rearrangements like we've, we talked about in the Philadelphia chromosome. We can uh, also have suppressor functions being absent or suppressed. There are environmental factors such as viruses, parasites, chemicals, radiation, mechanical stress. Cancer, though, is genetically heterogeneous. That's because cancer evolves. So if it's a germline mutation, germline means that it's in your reproductive cells. You'll pass it along. Family history may identify people with a modest to high risk of cancer. Remember that 5 to 10% of all cancers have an inherited predisposition. There's a change in the DNA sequence that can be inherited. You can also have a somatic mutation, which means a mutation that takes place in other kinds of something other than a sperm or an egg. It's not going to be inherited. It takes place during your lifetime. It can happen in any cell except the egg or the sperm. Categories of mutated genes include proto-oncogenes that turn into oncogenes, tumor suppressor genes that can be either inhibited or absent, and then DNA repair genes such as BRCA. This is the end of part one of a series. Stay tuned for part two, which is going to be coming out soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.